Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is, when we talk about skeletal muscles, we say that they have a striated appearance. That is, they have striations. So here, whatever you see, that is a particular muscle fiber. So this muscle fiber has the cytoplasm. It also has the multiple nuclei and it also has striations. That is, alternate dark and light bands. Now, what gives this striated appearance? From where do this dark and light bands come into picture on these muscle fibers? Now, there are myofibrils which are present in the sarcoplasm. So, this is going to be interesting from here. So, what are these myofibrils now? So, it is again a new term. Now, there is something very interesting here. Now, these are filaments which are arranged parallelly in the sarcoplasm of the muscle fiber. So, this, is, this was your muscle fiber, right? Now, the striated appearance on the muscle fibers which you see, that is because of the presence of these thin filaments. And you will get to know that these filaments have alternate dark and light bands like this. Now, they are extremely thin. But when many such filaments are joined together, so what will happen? Somewhere you have dark bands, somewhere you have light bands. So overall, you will get a light and the dark alternate appearance. And that is what is known as the striations. So these striations are due to the presence of these myofibrils, that is extremely thin filaments which are arranged parallelly in the sarcoplasm. Okay, so now here you can see the myofibrils. Each of these which are arranged parallelly, they are myofibrils. Now striations are seen on each myofibril as I said. Now here everywhere, these dots which I am marking just to represent that they are the dark regions and the remaining portion is the light regions. So now on all these myofibrils you have alternate dark and light regions and that is why you see them like this. Now this is how a myofibril actually looks like. I mean, this is how the entire arrangement looks like. So, some portion is light. So, this region is light region. Again, this region is dark region. Again, this region is light region and dark region and so on. So, alternate light and the dark regions are present inside the myofibril. So, this is the structure of a myofibril, one particular myofibril. So, any one of these thin filament looks like this. Now the question is, what makes this striations to be present on each myofibril? What is there in the myofibril because of which there are alternate dark and light bands? Now these striations are due to the presence of two proteins, actin and myosin. So these are the two proteins which are present inside the myofibril. Now actin is the protein which causes, which gives rise to the lighter bands and myosin gives rise to the dark bands. So here wherever you see light that is due to the presence of actin, wherever you see dark that is due to the presence of myosin. So this actin and myosin proteins are present alternately on each myofibril and that is why this gives a striated appearance on each myofibril. And since several myofibrils form the muscle fiber, that is why the muscle fiber also gets a striated appearance. Now the question is, how are these actin and myosin uh, organized on each myofibril? Now as you can see here, if, if this is, now let me make a very rough diagram. Let us suppose this is your myofibril. Actually, this is the structure of a detailed myofibril. Now let us suppose in that you have a dark band like this, then you have a light band. Again, you have a dark band, you have a light band. Again, you have a dark band again you have a light band and so on. Let us suppose this is how it is arranged, one dark, one light. So that means this, this is the portion where myosin is present, here actin is present, again myosin is present, actin is present, myosin, actin and so on. So all these proteins are arranged 
just one after another and they are arranged parallel to the longitudinal axis of the muscle fiber because see this is the muscle fiber right this is the axis of the muscle fiber so which would be the longitudinal axis that is the perpendicular axis of the muscle fiber would be this one right so these actin and myosin are organized parallel to the longitudinal axis of the muscle fiber and they are organized alternately one after another so they are arranged parallel to each other so this is myosin parallel to this is actin again parallel to this is myosin again parallel to this is actin and they are also arranged parallelly to the longitudinal axis of the muscle fiber so clear so this arrangement has to be very very clear because only if you understand this you will be able to understand the actual mechanism of muscle contraction so this was your muscle fiber inside the muscle fiber you have thin filaments called myofibrils this is how a myofibril look like and it is this striations on the myofibril is due to the presence of actin and myosin now let us talk about the two proteins actin and myosin in detail now actin and myosin are known as contractile proteins because these proteins are capable of causing muscle contraction that is why they are called contractile proteins so first we will talk about actin and then we will take up myosin so actin is the protein which is present in the light bands so these are the light colored bands and this is the place where actin is present so this is the place where actin is present whereas myosin is present in the dark bands so this is the region which is dark and so myosin is present here so actin forms the isotropic band which is abbreviated as i band now what is the meaning of isotropic the term isotropy means uh, for it, it is, means something where the properties are same throughout the region so if you look at this light region you see now here in this picture wherever you have the white colored lines that represents the light region that is that represents the protein actin and wherever you have this dark blue colored line that represents myosin so if you look at the light bands you see only white colored lines are present right so starting from here till here everywhere you just see the white lines present so that means the properties are same throughout properties in the sense it is all made up of actin throughout so the entire light band is made up of only one protein that is actin so that is why it is called isotropic because in a way it is homogeneous whereas in case of myosin it forms an isotropic band that is because if you look at the dark band you see the middle portion of the dark band is all dark so in fact till some places so if, if you look here it is only the dark blue here also only dark blue but beyond this you have both dark blue as well as white so in case of dark band some the middle portion of the dark band is all pure dark that is it is all pure myosin so maybe only this much portion is pure myosin but beyond this it is combination of myosin and actin again beyond this it is again combination of actin and myosin so that means the distribution in, in of myosin in the dark band is not uniform throughout that is why it is called an isotropic so here it is comparatively inhomogeneous when compared to the i band so that is why the actin region is known as the isotropic band or the i band so this is known as the i band and this portion is known as the a band that is the an isotropic band actin are thin filaments now these actin portion is comparatively thinner that is also because structure wise they are thin filaments whereas myosin structure wise are quite thick when compared to actin in actin there is an elastic fiber called z line which is present at the center of each i band which holds the thin filaments now here if you see these are all thin filaments of actin now these thin filaments you can see the white lines are drawn thinner when compared to the dark blue lines just to show that actin filaments are thinner than myosin now if you see this this is the i band at the center of the i band you actually see a white line so this line is nothing but 
the Z line. This line is called the Z line and what does it do? It connects or it holds the thin filaments together. The filaments on this side and the filaments on this side, they are joined together by this Z line. Now, in a very similar way, there is a fibrous membrane called M line, which is present at the center of each A band, which holds the thick filaments. So here, if you see this one, this structure, which you see here, that is the M line. So I'm sorry about it here by mistake. Our A band is written as I band and thick filament is written as thin filaments. So this is the M line. So you got the structure how the myofibril structure would be. It consists of filaments because these proteins are also present in the form of filaments, thin structures. So the thinner ones are the actin and they form the light bands which is isotropic and the thicker ones are the myosin which form the anisotropic band. So at the center of the isotropic band you have the Z line and at the center of the anisotropic band you have the M line. So this is the basic structure of the contractile protein. Okay, now another important thing to note here is, now this protein, I mean this entire uh, myofibril is present throughout the length of the muscle fiber. So you will be having many Z lines and many M lines, right? Now the distance between two consecutive Z line, for example, this is one Z line and this is the next Z line. So the distance between these two, this distance, what is it known as? This distance is or this region between two Z lines is defined as sarcomere and this sarcomere is the functional unit of contraction. When we will study the process of contraction, we will see that as the sarcomere contracts, the muscle contracts and it causes the bones to move, thereby causing a movement. So the sarcomere is the basic functional unit. So in order to contract the muscle, you will have to contract the sarcomere. That means you will have to bring the Z lines closer to each other. That would be our aim when we talk about muscle contraction. Okay, so now, thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.